What up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to check out a car before you buy it and make sure everything's good to go with it. So stay tuned. Alright, so one of the first things obviously that you're going to want to do is walk around and check the paint. We're going to use my vehicle as the test vehicle for today, but you want to check all these lines here between the fenders and the hood on both sides. You want to check fender to door gaps. You want to make sure that this is relatively even from top to bottom. Same on the other side. Same with these doors. You want to make sure, and mine has these little guards on there and, and so you don't tear up the paint if you hit the door on something. And they're especially helpful considering I park next to a wall like this. So most vehicles aren't going to have this. And you can, of course, kind of check the gap there at the bottom. And you pretty much want to do that on all the lines of the car. You want to go around, check the trunk, make sure that everything like this looks right. <clears throat> and what you're checking for is if any of these parts have ever been removed or replaced before. Another thing you want to do, you want to check for bumper damage, cracks, dents, you know, dings, things like that. Check the wheels for curb rash. Check the tire size on the tire. Right here, it's uh, 225 60 17 on my vehicle. And there's a sticker inside the driver door that will tell you what tire size the vehicle came with from the factory and that'll kind of tell you uh, you know are they still running the right tires and things of that nature another thing you also want to look up underneath the car as good as you possibly can and you're checking to see is the muffler there is there a lot of rust is the catalytic converter missing? Is, you know, anything else going on? Is there any sections where it's really crunched in really bad or anything like that from being improperly jacked up? So you'll go around and honestly, you could even do exactly what I'm doing right now. If you don't want to get real down on your hands and knees getting dirty and all that, you can just film a little video underneath the vehicle. And so we'll check the final side here. And of course, you know, I've taken pretty good care of this vehicle overall, so I don't expect we'll find too many issues with it. But you're basically just going around and looking for uh, any issues. And I'm going to try to point out some things to uh, pay particular attention to, such as the body lines, rust, and things of that nature, things that may be missing. You know, like this little spot here, screwed up on the paint, little stuff like that. If it looks really faded, um, you can also have a get a paint meter and check. But a lot of times, if you've looked at enough cars, you can kind of tell if something's been painted or not. Or check for, you know, color differences. Even if they're both black, this might be a different black than this. So be looking for those sort of things as well. And then, of course, check over the windshield really good. You want to check and make sure there's no chips or cracks because it would suck to buy a car and then realize that there's something going on with the windshield. And then another thing, of course, you want to do is check and make sure that all the doors open and close properly. Go all around the car and do that. Make sure they sound right, all that good stuff. Make sure the trunk opens right, make sure it closes right, make sure everything sounds good. All right, next, you want to look under the hood, obviously. You want to check the engine out real good. How clean the engine is is going to be a big factor as to whether it's been taken care of or not. So you'll want to look at the engine and check and see if parts of the engine, such as this valve cover here, are super greasy or if they're, you know, pretty clean. You also want to check all your fluid levels. The washer fluid doesn't matter too much, but you got your coolant here. You got power steering. You got brake fluid right there. You got your transmission dipstick right here. And then on the other side, 
is an oil dipstick. Now, obviously, this is just the case for my vehicle. Every vehicle is going to be a little bit different, but you're going to want to check all of those things. If you're looking at a more modern vehicle, you're probably not going to have power steering to worry about because it's all electric now, and you may not have to worry about the um, transmission either because a lot of times they got that all sealed up and you got to check it from the bottom. But uh, the more fluids you can take a look at, the better. You also probably want to check the air filter if you can, just to get a good idea of what uh, kind of care the engine has had in its lifetime. You want to check the belt. If you're looking at a front wheel drive vehicle, then chances are the belt's going to be over here because the engine's going to be sideways, so keep that in mind. You want to give your hoses a squeeze, make sure they're not cracking or brittle or uh, dry rotted or have any bulges or swelling in them and that's just about it under here obviously you want to start it up and make sure that it's not leaking from the top or the bottom I may have uh, should have mentioned that when we looked under the front of the vehicle you're kind of looking for leaks on the front side the side sides you're looking for missing parts crunches from a jack you know things like that and then on the rear you're just kind of checking it out making sure the mufflers there and things like that but uh, up here is kind of a continuation of the checking for leaks you're checking valve covers you're checking the front end of the engine at the timing cover checking the water pump down here looking for coolant leaks and things of that nature so you'll want to give that a good once over and then of course you want to listen to the way that it sounds once it starts up so that'll be the next thing we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and move on to the interior. So now that we're moving to the interior, sometimes I like to uh, start out with the back seat because a lot of vehicles, there's not too much to it. So on this particular example, you check and make sure the ashtray is in place because these do pull out. You know, obviously not every car is going to be quite the same, but you're essentially going to be checking all the features of the vehicle. So... All of that we can get inside here make sure that everything feels right if you want to you can check all the seat belts and make sure they're working properly check your armrest check your vents see if they're broken or if they're working properly you also want to turn the vehicle on and check the switches make sure that the locks move up and down manually as well as electronically you know, just check things out in the back seats, usually pretty simple. A lot of times there's a dome light or something of that nature on the uh, headliner. You want to make sure that those bulbs are all working. And then now we can move on to the front seat. Alright, so now we're here in the front. And as we mentioned before, we definitely want to hear what the engine sounds like. Start it up, check all these lights here, make sure all the lights come on and all of that good stuff. You don't want to find something where the check engine light doesn't even work and you determine that it's got a bunch of codes in it. So while you're inside the vehicle, you literally want to press every button and make sure that everything is working. You know, locks, windows, mirror, trunk button, seat adjustment, the horn, the cruise control, the radio controls. Check the AC, check the heat. Open and close all of the compartments, the glove box, the console, the cup holders. You know, do you want to check all of these things? Even though it may sound simple or it may seem like something that's not going to ever have an issue, check it all. Press every button. If you want, you can wait till you do the test drive. But while you're looking at it, definitely check every button. Check the mileage. Check the stickers in the door because that's where your, uh, I think they're over here, but you want to check those door stickers and that's your tire placard and your uh, VIN and everything. So you want to make sure that that matches what's up here on the uh, dash. Here's some more buttons you could press. Turn on the radio, make sure that the radio is working, all of that good stuff. Maybe give the engine a good rev. Another thing I'd recommend bringing with you, if you happen to have one, is an OBD2 code reader. Here is the location of my OBD2 port. We'll turn the light on. I guess I have to 
zoom in a little bit here for you to turn the light on but there you go you can see that a little bit better now so you'll definitely uh, if you have the option to do so I would strongly recommend bringing an OBD2 device as well in order to check for any potential codes and that's about all there is to it once you've checked all the things that we just talked about in this video you'll be able to pretty much determine everything that's wrong with it. Of course, you didn't jack it up, so you're not really going to be able to check suspension too well, and you want to maybe look at the brakes a little later on. Some vehicles you can see through the wheel, check the brakes as you're walking around. Other vehicles, you're going to have to pull the wheel off, and almost nowhere is going to let you pull the wheel off while you're just looking at it, at least like a Craigslist or a Facebook deal or something like that. But if you look over all the things that I just talked about in the video, you'll have a pretty good idea of the condition of the vehicle and you can make your uh, decision whether to purchase it or not however don't forget to test drive the vehicle and go I mean go a good amount you know go five six seven miles five ten fifteen minutes whatever makes you feel comfortable that the seller is you know willing to agree to of course and check how good the brakes work check how it handles and turns bumps all of that if you even want to check the acceleration depending on what kind of car it is you know I would definitely do that as well especially if you're gonna drop a lot of money on it and stuff like that so um, once you check everything you got your list you can use that as a negotiating tool if you want to lower the price or if you find something you don't like you're like hey you know what I think I'm gonna pass at least you'll have kind of the knowledge that you need to make that decision one final thing on it do not purchase the vehicle unless they can show you a clean and clear title that is in their name not in someone else's name you'll want to really look that over really well if you don't know what a clear title looks like maybe uh, look Look that up online for your state or maybe uh, look at the title to your own vehicle if you don't have a lien on your uh, car and then that way you can kind of know what you're looking for in regards to that otherwise please like comment and subscribe and stay tuned for many more awesome videos on the Andy's Auto YouTube channel I'm Andy signing off